The PewterCast is sponsored by HuntAKiller.com, an immersive murder mystery experience like no other. You can save 20% on your first box when you subscribe by using the code PewterCast at checkout. And we'd like to thank HuntAKiller.com for their support of the show. Welcome back to the PewterCast. Ren, it is time for an old show with a new name. This is our Inbox Show. I'm Brent Allen, joined as always by Ren Dax. Ren, we got some feedback from our fellow fans out there, buddy. Thank I you. bet we did. Thank you. <laughs> I bet we did. This, yes. was, uh, this loss has triggered a lot of people. Triggered would definitely be the right word uh, for that. Uh, but for those of you that are maybe new to this show, um, basically this is the show where we sort of turn it over to you. Ren and I have had our final say, whatever you might call that, uh, about this week uh, before we move on. And it is now time for you guys. Some of you guys joined us for the instant cast. Some of you guys didn't join us for the instant cast, and this is on the backside. So we've received several emails. But one of the things Places that we look at at the inbox run is we also look at our uh, podcast reviews, our Apple podcast reviews. Um, we have a new one in this week that I'd like to oh, read. We do, yeah, we do. I uh, always always promise we'll read these, whether good, bad. We always prefer the five star kind guys. Uh, but this one says, uh, "Great podcast for a bad team." This is a five star review from Fat Daddy Slacks or Daddy Fat Slacks. I'm sorry. Um, I got to be honest. When I first read the title, Ren, I was thinking he was saying that it's a great podcast, but you and I were a bad team. And then I realized oh, really? he's talking about the Bucks. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get that at all. I knew he was talking about the Bucks. Yeah, right it, away. It, it, it took me a second. It took me a second. But anyway, uh, Daddy Fat Slack says, I've been listening to the podcast since the beginning of the season, and these guys do a great job in covering what's going on with this abysmal team. They always have a fun spin on what it's like to be a Bucks fan. I'd recommend this podcast for anyone wanting to keep up to date with the Bucks. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Daddy Fat Slacks. We definitely appreciate it. And uh, we do. We try to make this fun we try to make it entertaining um even when things uh may not be so entertaining uh but um so thank you for that listen if you guys uh would do us a favor it, it actually really is very much a favor to us when you guys go do a review on apple podcast uh, over 90 percent of our listeners come to us on apple uh we've got a few on podbean which is the next one uh smaller ones on google and and some of the other ones out there but uh especially with apple because what happens is people start looking for buccaneers podcast because believe it or not even in a down year, rent people are still looking for podcasts, and this podcast continues to grow year over year over year, no matter what the team is doing. Uh, and and you hear that actually from several of the other outlets out there as well. So that just tells me more and more people are getting into the podcasting space. So uh, what happens is when people start searching for Buccaneers podcasts, this just helps us populate a little bit higher. It's a way that you help out the show, help spread the word. So uh, you guys do that. Go over to Apple Podcast, rate, review. Uh, we'll see that, and we'll read that on an upcoming episode of the PewterCast. Uh, with that, Ren, I don't see any uh, special uh, inboxes from other places other than our email, so why don't we go ahead and jump right into the emails. We have several of them to get through uh, this week. Our first one comes to us from Anthony. Wait. Oh. What's, what's the over-under on positive versus negative emails this week? I am I – am, I've already read them all, so I kind of know. Okay. I'm going to put it at, at – at- Point five. Okay, and what does so that mean? If, yeah, it means if we get one positive, then that would be like if you were going to bet we get one uh-huh. positive email, then right. you would bet the over. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I'm taking the under. <laughs> You're taking the under. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Does the uh, does the the iTunes review count? No, it does not. All right, all right. Well, our first one comes to us from Anthony. Uh, he says, "Hey guys, it's Anthony from Tampa. How do you think Sue is doing for us?" I've heard a lot of people say that he's done nothing and that he's another screw-up by Jason, but I disagree. We have the number one run defense for a reason, and from what I've seen, he gets doubled constantly. I don't know how people are saying he's a non-factor. Uh, I'll stop there, but go ahead, Ren. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, there is that narrative out there, you know, uh, Fish is pushing it really hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Peter Plank's pushing it really hard uh, mm-hmm. about Sue. And, you know, I haven't, I haven't done, like, a film breakdown of Sue, so uh, all I can really say is that uh, we have the best best run defense in the league, and I, I think he's a part of it. I think he's I think he's a big part of it. Yeah, I don't I don't have numbers to be able to back this up. I don't have stat lines 
to be able to show what this is. All I have is the old eyeball test, Ren. Um, I have watched every snap that this team has played uh, very closely for the last four or five years. I've watched most every other snap from the years before that, like just sort of as a as a more casual fan. Um, just from the old eyeball test, uh, you know, things sometimes don't show up on the stat lines when they're actually there. Sue, uh, and, and here's the deal, because presumably what people are saying is, the, the other half of that argument is, is not oh, Sue isn't doing anything, it's the, we shouldn't have gotten rid of Gerald McCoy, right? Like, that's that's the that's the subtext to it. That's the other side of it, of we, we right. should have just kept Gerald because Sue's not doing anything for us, right? Like, let's, right. let's just bring it all out. So I can only compare Sue to Gerald, and I can say this. I have visually seen Sue be in more plays, be breaking up more plays, reaching out, grabbing more people in the, how many games have we had now? Eleven? Uh, in the 11 gonna... <laughs> games that we've had. I was going to say six. <laughs> Why was I going to say six? I don't know. Your math <laughs> is six. off. I don't know. Trying, um, trying, trying to rewind the year. Yeah. <laughs> we stopped after the Rams game. We we're done. Yeah. Uh, we're three and three. Did yeah, you there you go. Now? Right. Uh, but I have, I have it just anecdotally, I have visually seen more of an impact from Sue than I saw with Gerald McCoy. Now, I know for guys like Fish and dude over at Peter Plank and Tom Bass, passenger and that whole crew anecdotal evidence doesn't mean anything to them and i don't care but you asked me for my opinion anthony and i will tell you that i think sue is has been doing fine i knew that sue wasn't going to come in here and light up 10 sacks a year, you know uh, i don't know how many sacks sue has on the year it's probably like two or something like that like it's not a lot right mm -mm. Um, i think it's one and a half one and a half but he wasn't the guy that i was asking to come in and get a whole bunch of sacks from you know and to be fair besides shaq barrett no one's getting sacks right it's true. And even Shaq Barrett, like, he had a great run right at the very beginning, and it's it's very, you know, spursed out now. So uh, I do feel like Sue is making a much bigger impact um, than what Gerald was making, uh, just based purely off of anecdotal evidence, uh, off of what my own eyes tell me I'm seeing, uh, things that don't necessarily show up in, in the stat line. Uh, and it's, it's little things like I see him, like, here's what doesn't show up on the stat line. When somebody's standing around in the backfield when the play has moved 25 yards down the field versus yeah. who's running after the ball. Stat lines don't show you that. Stat lines don't show you who's getting clogged up with double teams. And by the way, Gerald's getting clogged with double teams too. So that's, you know, they're both getting getting eaten up with that but i have witnessed sue reach out and grab the person if sue wasn't the guy who got the credit he's the guy who tangled him up long enough to give the credit to whomever got it you know what i mean so you know i think sue's doing fine yes he's expensive but listen guys you we have this thing about saying oh well so and so doesn't deserve x amount of dollars listen people cost what they cost it's the bottom line it's not about what they deserve it's just this is the market value for what this position costs this <laughs> year and we paid for sue what we paid for sue which is not all that far off of i think what the the panthers paid for gerald um i think i could be wrong it seems like i think Ger gerald i think way gerald, cheaper. i think sue's like nine and gerald yeah. ended up getting like six six and a half yeah something like that so um but gerald would have cost us 13 exactly exactly so you know it's, 12 right 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 uh so it, it's one of those kind of kind of situations to me so i i think sue's doing fine i think he's doing what we're asking him to do um you know but i don't i don't anticipate and i don't expect sue to come in and be the new uh leader in face of the defense either you know so um i think he's a stopgap until we you know draft another guy in his position to, to sit I, next to I think the people that are the loudest against sue are people with agendas against sue or that were agendas for gerald yeah which in turn yeah Is which in turn makes sue. him yeah. against yeah. sue I so watch him for yourself and you decide yeah yeah you know i'm, I'm kind of in the middle on him to be honest yeah you know i would like him to make you know show up more you know in the old eye tests on sundays sure. but for what he's being asked to do and mm -hmm. if you look at his career stats for what he's done he, he's doing it like mm -hmm. you know he makes tackles and he makes tackles for loss and early in his career he got a lot of sacks right he is way tapered off in the past two three years as far as sacks but his tackles for loss and overall tackles have not and that's what he's doing for the bucks mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. yeah and doing. i think you know people look at gerald and they see the kind of year that he's having i, I don't think he's lighting it up uh he got his first sack against 
the Bucks and his second sack against the Bucks in the same game, and his second like, and a half sack. It was it, yeah. Uh, and I think he it was all in the London game us, too. And I think that's yeah. what he's got. Oh, and that's what he's got. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So I mean, it's it, it, and they're gonna look at it. Oh, look, he's having a great year up in 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 Carolina. Look, they're asking Gerald to do something different than what we would have been asking him to do here as well. So you you can't look at the year that a player has in another organization and another team and just say, hey, look, he did that there. He could have done that here, or he would have done that here. That's not in the case either. So yeah, because we've seen that a lot. Right, right, <laughs> right. So Baker, Curry, yeah, Jackson, Ward, mm. Johnson, Johnson, the other Johnson, fourth Johnson. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, next email comes into us from Mark. Thank you, Anthony, by the way, for your email. Uh, Mark says, watching these games, it seems that our receivers are not getting near as open as the opponent's receivers are. This is not a comment on Winston, but he seems to be having to make a lot more tight throws. Do you agree with this? Do you think it's the routes, the roles, or, or the routes, the plays, or the talent? I enjoy the podcast. Oh, the, Keep up the good work. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It is. Uh, it's the routes for sure. Yeah, you know we, you know we've we've talked about it. Like we watch, you know, third window crossing routes like crush us week after week after week after week, mm-hmm. and we ran two last week against who the hell we play the Saints. Mm-hmm. One went for a touchdown. One was dropped for a first down, mm-hmm. and that was it. Like. <clears throat> the reason there's no separation is because these are all like button hooks and comebacks and, and digs and stick routes, you know, or they're fly routes. There's mm-hmm. nothing drags across the field or crossing routes. Um, I think that was in the game plan, but OJ Howard screwed that up for everybody. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, remember, and we don't run any slants either. Remember how when we were just like, run a slant to, like, like Deshaun Jackson doesn't have to run 50 yards downfield throwing the ball. Oh, like run right. a slant like where is that play so it's just sort of not in the in it wasn't with cutter and it, i haven't seen it much with lech with slash uh arian's game plan so mm-hmm. to answer that i think it's 100 percent the routes fair enough i i don't disagree i don't disagree because it's i i and I, this weekend i think was as bad as i've ever seen it when you look at the amount of time that Jameis has to hold on to the ball like it, it it's 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 mind-boggling to me absolutely mind-boggling to me and it was the same way under cutter it so is what it is all right uh thank you mark next email comes into us from our buddy chris from alaska now in va he says pewter guys man you guys wait before you read this yeah yeah I, I I didn't respond to his DM, but but Chris DM me, and he uh-huh. was like, well, "Let me let me read it. I hope he doesn't get mad if this is supposed to be private. Let me see if I can find it." Uh, oh no, actually, he texts me. Oh okay. I I have had like hour long phone conversations with Chris before. He's like, "We need to talk," <laughs> <laughs> and and he'll call me, and I'm pretty sure he's doing it on his way to work. Right. And uh and like we'll talk for an hour. You know, and he goes, oh, what about this? And, you know, he's always very calm. And then, like, I kind of hear, like, the car turn off. And Uh he's like, okay, I'm going to let you go. Go, go, right, man. (laughs) He goes, he goes, he goes, I'm a feeling, I'm I'm a really feeling down today, wishing I can star in bed all day. Stay in bed, obviously. Uh Send my email, but couldn't even finish my thoughts. So right. if this, so listeners, if this uh-huh. email sounds a little incomplete, incoherent, uh, it's because Chris just, you know, he was he he was done, man. Yep. He took the loss so hard to the Saints, he didn't want to get go to work. There you go, well, man. I get it. I get it. it. Says Peter, guys, man, never seen you guys so down. Ren was wearing a sucking ears bag over his head. Brent was contemplating not doing the podcast or doing in the podcast. Anyway, he says, I get it. This team has given this fan base nothing. Uh, has given this fan base to be nothing but deflated and why more fans from opposing teams are at home games. No one wants to watch this crap show. I really think the way you guys felt on Sunday was the way Buck Nation felt on Sunday. I agree. And I still say, I think every single person in the Buccaneers organization needs to go listen to our uh, uh, podcast, including Gladys. I'm looking at you, Gladys. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Enemy number one. Your fault. That's right. Got to get an receptionist, guys. And, and I've listened to a few, you know, f- fringe media fan generated podcasts that have had, you know, emailers and callers and uh-huh. that type of stuff on. Yeah. And uh, like yeah, this week. everyone. Th- yeah, this week. Yeah, yeah. Since the game. Yeah. And yeah, everyone's the same. Everyone's yeah. just like they're, you know, they're, they're just fed up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, look at our last podcast. It's still, you know, it's it's weird, Red. Like, like, because you often talk about like, and you're, you know, in your forty years of fandom of this team, like the Buccaneers would go out and have a performance like they did this past week, like, and it would ruin your week. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I I can't say that I don't know that I've ever really had a full week ruined. Like, I can come in and be pissed off, but usually by the end of the instant cast, I'm okay. Usually the next morning, I, I've already moved on. You know, and and the emotions have oh, calmed yeah. down. I'm thinking well, yeah, about it more logically. You, like, you know, you got to remember, like back when the Bucks are going two and. 14 five years in a row yeah like i didn't have anybody to talk to right you know there there was no i didn't get to you know go out and, you know and do a what's a pocket what's the internet right you know what's right. a cell phone like i right. there was there was nowhere to, to talk about to make you feel better yeah. and if there was no one at work that talked about the bucks because no one did because they were so terrible i mean yeah. you lived in the tampa bay area you were laughed at by your peers for being a buccaneers fan mm-hmm. you just yeah. were yeah and you had no leg to stand on. Right. And we're back in that spot now. <laughs> so, no, I get it. I get it. All right. Uh, Chris says, he says, number one, you guessed it. You guessed it. Jason Light. That's where it starts, right? He's been here five years and what? Still not winning? He should. Uh, still not winning. He should. Uh, a lot of Chris's. I'm going to try my best to uh, translate Chris's speak here. Um, he did warn us. Yeah, he did warn us. He did warn us. <laughs> so, uh, he said, still not winning. He should and probably will be the first to go. Uh, oh, he should and probably will be the first to go. He missed on that 2016 draft class, and it's inexcusable. I have never seen a team that was good miss on an entire draft class. Not the entire draft class. Ryan Smith is still around. So how did he miss on this draft class? That's a big question. How can he continually keep missing on the draft picks, like successful draft picks? Evans, Marpet, Godwin, Winston, you could argue, Vita Vea. Jury might still be out a little too far. I'm adding that one in. His failures, VH3, ASJ, Noah Spence, Aguayo, MJ Stewart still maybe a little bit too early on him maybe not Donovan yeah. Smith you could also argue um, Justin Watson you could still you know he's disappeared Ben Anak says look I'm not going to list every name but you get my point he has failed to draft well and put talent on this team at some point you can't keep blaming the coaches uh, I have yet to see a plan where light drafts uh, there is no rhyme or reason right I talked about it last week. Every you know, this is the week to pile on Jason Light. It seems like I mean, it is. Everybody's always had issues with. There's always been a contingent that's had issues with Jason Light. That contingent is loud this week. Well, the people, I think, I think it's starting to shift. Yeah, you know, with with you know when VH3 went away, uh-huh. and it, and it's like okay, that's not good. But mm-hmm. if him not being you know a loafer and not a cancer in the locker room, but but not a positive influence in the locker room either uh-huh. you know he wasn't anti-coach anti-team but he wasn't pro team right and pro organization either mm-hmm. you know just you know sort of like we like to say uh, uh just there to collect the paycheck right type of deal didn't love the game like oh we got him out of there let's see how this turns around Mm-hmm. And they play their most overall disappointing game of the year, right? You know, and uh, it, it was frustrating because it feels like the team's not getting any better. It feels like they're getting worse. The offensive line is like feels like it's getting worse. Mm-hmm. Who knows about the running backs because they don't get the ball? OJ Howard is having a god awful season, mm-hmm. uh, and Jameis leads the leagues in interceptions. Yeah, so. <laughs> So now where do you point? Because you've pointed to all those people for, mm-hmm. you know, you know, I, I've, I've blamed the offensive line for a week. That didn't work. You know, I've blamed the pass rush for a week. That didn't work. I blamed the secondary for, geez, eight weeks. That hasn't worked. Uh, so now, we're, now whose fault is it? Well, the 2016 draft is all, all but, you know, gone. Yes, Ryan Smith's still on the team, but, you know, he makes about two plays a game. Because he's in for about two plays a game, right? Um, and you know that's all that's left. So that's you know people are clinging onto that. Like mm-hmm. you can't miss on a draft and expect to be good. Who drafts the players? Jason Light. Jason Light. You got to go. Yeah, and see, here's my problem with that with that thinking, that line of thinking. Very few GMs around this league, and Jason Light is definitely not one of them. <sighs> draft in a vacuum you know they, they don't they the 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 coaches are a part of these decisions ownership is all part of these decisions it's not just jason making those deci- like he may be kind of the final swing on that the final voice um you know he may be the guy collecting all the information for everybody to make that decision but it, it's it's just not it's not him in a vacuum i'm not saying that he shouldn't go maybe he should maybe there's something there i don't know but i I, I'm not ready to just place every single little bit of blame on um, 
uh, on Jason when, you know, he very clearly, at, at least I don't think he's necessarily the only guy in the middle of all of that. Yeah, I don't know either. You know, you don't want to keep changing GMs because and because they are so closely tied together. You know what I mean? Right. And when it, when PA says those things like I trust Jason, well, you know what that says to me? That means Jason's not going to screw me over. Okay, what does that mean? That means Jason's not going to draft a guy that you don't want. Exactly. exactly. Jason's not going to go off the reservation on his draft. He's going to draft the guys that you guys have discussed and scouted and talked about. Mm-hmm. And you know, we need to field this position, this position because these guys aren't good enough because we obviously we saw it with the cornerbacks you know right you know they drafted three dbs and they right. had uh, two star four they had four starters evans whitehead mm-hmm. vernon and davis and everyone was like okay let's give those guys time we bring in three more and it's like okay what's going on here well obviously they had a plan you know right if B, if ba wasn't there and cutter was still the coach would that have happened mm-hmm. no no it wouldn't have so you know uh so that's what that means so but but so if Jason goes, does that mean B.A. goes? So, I mean, at the end of the day, if you want – if you don't think B.A. is coaching you know, as, as hard as he should or as invested as much as he should be or what you feel about Jameis or what you feel about Jason Light, they're all going to get another year. Mm-hmm. Like just accept it. They're all getting another year. And if we're at this position again, you know, halfway through the season, I know we're a little over, but if we're at this sort of the same at, you know, two and six, three and five, and they're, mm-hmm. you know, and the easy part of the schedule, this was the easy part of the schedule, like, you know, things will start to change. Like, that's mm-hmm. when the serious talks. But they, Jason Light, BA sold the Glazers on this plan, and you got to let them, you got to let them work through it. Yeah. Because there has been a lot of things that have worked out. I yeah. mean, you know, we, we thought Rojo was a bust not thought kappa was a bust not you know we mm-hmm. we didn't understand about all these dbs but uh sean murphy buntings has seemed to be brought along well mm-hmm. had a pass breakup you know last week uh you know carlton davis is still okay whitehead seems to be improving mm-hmm. edwards you know even though he did give up a couple of plays i thought he had his best game as far as impact on the defense devin white seems to be you know his his arrows still tr- tr- trending straight up right. i don't understand why people are like yeah he's gonna be good i think he's good i mean that guy hits somebody they go backwards right i mean i saw it two or three times like when you hear like you know you rarely hear like a big crack of the pads in the pros mm-hmm. you know because the running backs are not interested in the receivers are not interested of in trying to blow you up and run through you like they are in college Devin White doesn't give you that that opportunity because he closes the gap so fast. They're like, oh, she, like they're not ready for it. They haven't made their move to sort of angle off on the side like Warren Work Dunn was so great at. Like Warren Duck n- Work Dunn never took a hit. Mm-hmm. Like no one ever hit him. Right. He just kind of like he grazes off stuff and fall down or, or or spin out of it. Like so, I just everything that was promised to us with this staff has worked out except for Jameis's turnovers. Mm-hmm. Getting tight ends involved in the offense, which they did Sunday. It just mm-hmm. wasn't the guy we wanted. Right. And Todd Bowles' defense being this exotic blitz, lots of pressure, aggressive stuff. Because it definitely was not Sunday. Right. It was not pressure, we're coming at you, super aggressive defense. It just wasn't. But they, I think they know where they're at with their guys, and they're trying to protect certain guys mm-hmm. in there. And they're asking a lot more of the other guys to do it. And uh, right. we just got to hang on and hope they improve from game to game. Well, I go for the ride, right? Just stay on the ride. Yeah. You got to give them the time. You got. I mean, even after this abysmal week, like I, I, that is something I think that is helpful for me to remember is you've, we've got to give them the time. Uh, we've got to give them their season. You know, it, it's not fair to cut it short. Uh, Chris goes on. Number two, he says the left tackle and right tackle are horrible. I try my best not to mention Donovan Smith's name this season, but he's not been good. No matter the coach or scheme, you can't coach effort. That's something Donovan Smith lacks, and he can play 60 good plays and then have a play where he runs into Jameis's arm or gets him hurt, and it finally has happened. Dotson at least will give you effort, but he's just old and doesn't have the physical tools anymore. He's done, and guess what? There's no one to step into that role. Now the Bucks will have to pay big money for a right tackle or take a chance on a rookie. It's never a good sign when an NFC South opponent is praising a Bucks sign by saying I'm going to feast for the next three years. If some teams willing to take him off our hands, Bucks just need to move on from Donovan Smith. I mean, Jameis gets no time in the pocket like most QBs in the league do. Not every quarterback can be Russell Wilson. All those things are right. This is what I think is going to happen. I think Donovan Smith is going to right tackle and the Bucks draft a left tackle in round one. You think so? Oh, yeah. Because if you conclude that Jameis is going to come back next year, franchise tag, bridge, mm-hmm. you know, bridge deal, or 
if they bite the bullet and they go, we're giving them a big deal, I, that's probably the least likely, but mm-hmm. it can still happen. Mm-hmm. But if it, but but if Jameis is coming back next year, like you know, we've been trying to get rid of Dot for years, right. and and just when you're about to get rid of him, like, oh, he had a pretty good game, you know, mm-hmm. and then he kind of disappears for a game or two, and you're like, oh, and then he pops back, and you're like, oh yeah, that's right, you know, he just got he's you know he looked really silly on that play, right? Or he had not like, Dot and Donovan had their worst games of the year, yeah, you know, Donovan was playing at the level where. You didn't talk about him, Mm -hmm. which was a huge improvement for him. Right. You know, but then the last couple of games, you know, he might be getting tired, might be starting to wear down or I I don't know. But he but he hasn't had his best two, you know, best two or three games in a row. But neither has the whole entire offensive line. But definitely for sure. Dot and, and, and Donovan had their had their worst uh, games at, at, as tackles, and I'm with you. But I like that's what I would do. I would move dot to right tackle and draft a left tackle because you're probably even if you don't get a top ten pick, you can still get a really good offensive tackle somewhere. I mean, you know, like Dalton Reisner. You know, people mm-hmm. are still talking about that guy. You know, up, up you know, and Denver got him in the second. You know, there, there's guys, and the more that when draft starts to come up, there'll be more guys that will rise and fall and all that kind of stuff. So there's three or four guys now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now when draft season starts to come around, there's going to be like two or three that join. Them. And, and you know, it's sort of going to shuffle a bit. And it's going to start talking about, you know, uh, it's going to start getting real, really technical about slide steps and, and attitude and, and worth ethic and all that kind of stuff. It's going to shuffle them around. But, you know, even if you're picking, you know, like 13, 14, 15, you can get a starting left tackle. Like, you're fine. I'll be interested to see what happens. This is one of those situations where, like, I mean, yeah, you might be right. Look, it's, it, it makes almost no sense. I don't want to say, I don't know. How do I say that? I almost don't want to talk about it until they actually do something about it. You yeah. know, like it's, I, it's, it like for me, it's kind of that the situation we're in is the situation we're in. Donovan Smith is our left tackle. Dot is old and he's the right tackle. The most, the, the, the easiest Donovan Smith thing. will be here next year because yeah. we owe him a bunch of guarantees. Exactly. Money. And I, and I'll be honest with you. I don't think think they will in, unless something really happens um that it's kind of like if something falls in their lap i don't anticipate him moving over to the right side he's a left tackle his position he's been playing that's where they've got him they're going to try to keep him there if something happens where where that presents itself fine i think the most natural thing to see them do is they'll just bring in another right tackle um whether it's that a veteran too. or whether it's a draft pick i don't know um we'll see but you know it's it, it's uh and and i like you know mock drafts being what they are everybody knows how i feel about them if you've paid attention to the show if you haven't paid attention to the show i hate them uh because they're never right and we never can predict what teams do um because brent hates fun <laughs> it's just my own personal brent, opinion brent, man brent, I, listen brent. the vast majority of people out there love mock drafts and go crazy for them and that's how things like the draft network get built is because there's a crap ton of people that love it it's just not my thing but at the end of the day i don't um i I can't sit here and say, yeah, in the first round, they're going to draft a name a position um, because they seem to fool us every year. It's true. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what you and I, dec- de- you know, decide is their first first uh, need. And then even just the debates among people. Well, we got to get a quarterback. You guys, you know, get your thing. Well, we got to get a left tackle. Oh, we got to get a, a defensive tackle. We got to get a new defensive end. We got to get a new whatever. And the only good ones are in the first part of the draft. So you got it. Everybody's got to spend their first round pick on the well, we only and get they one. Li- and they went linebacker. Backer, corner, corner safety. Yeah. And before that, they went <laughs> tight end. Or no, no, defensive tackle. And then whatever, whatever. And then before that, they went tight end when we didn't need a tight end, but the player fell to him. And turns out, hey, listen, Chris's next point. OJ Howard isn't the talent that we thought he we were getting. Unless he is wide open, he won't catch the ball. He doesn't give a whole lot of effort when blocking either. I wouldn't be surprised if Bright plays more than him these next six games. These next six games are about who wants to be here and who won't. Won't be surprised if the Bucks trade him in the offseason season it's a possibility um it was interesting so i listened to stroud's podcast today and someone who works in the building uh-huh. told him and he didn't give up you know the person's name or, or where they work but right. this is what someone said to him and i think it falls in line with what i've been saying as in you know he just doesn't focus and he doesn't concentrate and maybe because right. it's come so easy for him you know his entire life like you know you, you've always been bigger stronger faster than everybody you, you, no one's ever sort of pushed you you know mm-hmm. what i mean like the talent on the field has never m- 
made you have to be play your absolute best every single play and, and be sharp and on point every single play because you're just you're just better you're just more gifted than they are mm-hmm. but this person said that oj howard's a good player i'm paraphrasing but he thinks he better he's better than he is well he so received he's a act- lot of hype i mean talk about reading your own press clippings because that's seems like all anybody talks about oj simpson this offseason was how he's gonna have OJ. this big year this big year oj o- howard's gonna o- have this big year you said oj simpson i say simpson i'm at howard yeah. whatever yeah yeah and and that's kind of what it is. And, and it's not that he doesn't work hard, and it's not that he's lazy, and it's not that he's a bad lock guy. It's just that he acts like off off the field, he acts like he's like the hot shit. Mm-hmm. And he hasn't proven it yet. Right. But he feels, but I guess in his head, or the way other people see him act, mm-hmm. they feel like he thinks he has. And they could trade him because, uh-huh. I mean, all you need is Cam Brady. We yeah. saw it again. Like, yeah. they have a they have a special bond, man. Yeah. There. James and Cam. There, there are people that would be willing to trade for OJ. Usually I would say, yeah, but who's going to trade him? Like, other teams are seeing the same thing that we're seeing right now, right? Uh, the potential for OJ Howard is still there. You know, like, oh, yeah. despite what we've seen, the potential is definitely there. And that's what people would be trading for. The problem I have is, is we're, you're going to get back a lesser pick. You know, I mean, he was a number 19 pick. He was a first-round draft pick. What are you going to get think, back for him now? A fourth? But you, no. Maybe a third? Oh, God, no. Probably, uh, probably a second. Really? You think you get a second yeah. for OJ? Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm not a big draft guy, so you know you you probably have a better feel on that than I do. But um, anyway, it, it could happen. It could. You know, um, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's more of like how they just don't use him. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it's like having a Ferrari and you commute three. You know, and and you're you use it as a daily driver, mm-hmm. and your commutes like you know ten minutes away, and you never get on the interstate. You know, and there's mm-hmm. four traffic lights in between, like you and where you work. Right. It's like did, why there's no point. Like you're not using. Mm-hmm. Like why did I spend two hundred ten thousand dollars on a car that I use the same thing I. Could could do a you know the Camry would actually be a better ride, right? <laughs> it would be a more comfortable and fun ride, right? Right. I you know I feel that way about a lot of podcasting equipment. I see some of the stuff that people spend money on. I'm like, wow, that's you don't need anyway. Anyway, I uh, Chris finishes his email. He says, honestly, I can't even finish this email this week. I'm just too pissed talking about it. He still says go Bucks though. So all right, all right. Uh, next email comes into us from Catherine. Uh, very rare we ever get a, get one in from a female listener, so I, I like this. It says, hey guys, had a few questions. One, who's having a worse year, Todd Bowles or Byron Leftwich? That's a good question. I mean, the easy pick would be Byron Leftwich, right? No. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The easy, Todd Bowles. the easy one would be Todd Bowles. Yeah, yeah. But but you see where this is going. Like he's weeding out the people that aren't working. Like Noah Spence gone. Like mm-hmm. Vernon Hargrave's gone. MJ right. Stewart healthy scratch. Buchanan gone. You mm-hmm. know, uh, brought in. Uh, you know, brought in basically a whole new defensive backfield that he's slowly getting them in in there and, and, and coaching them up. So mm-hmm. you know, uh, McCoy gone. Yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things. Quan gone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, oddly enough, left, which is taking a bigger hit yes. publicly. Yes. I would because, agree with that. He, but because he's a rookie, it's not because what's going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's what's the offense supposed to do? Score points. What does the offense do? Scores a lot of points. You know, fourth and late. I think it, I think this year they this week they dropped down to fifth. They yeah, were fourth. So they went down to fifth. So they're top five in points, but yeah. he's taking all the heat. And Bowles has the worst scoring defense in the league. Yep. But he's not taking any heat. You know why? Because he's got a resume, right? Of, of being a really good defensive mm-hmm. coordinator. And right. if you really look at it, you can see he's changing the parts. Yeah. And the other and, the other thing with that too, Ren, like along that line, there's not another Todd Bowles on this team that could call. Like, yeah, like, like, like there's Byron, but if Byron wasn't here doing his thing, B.A. would be calling the things. And that's who we really want anyway. We didn't want Byron. We wanted B.A. So you have that happening. But you're also 100 percent right, I believe, uh, in the idea that Todd Bowles has the resume. He has the clout. He has whatever. And we do see stuff happening on the defense. Um, It's not on the field yet, but we see we see the changes that are happening. There's no changes that looks to be making on the offense. Right. In fact, in fact, so few changes that keep going 
going to Rashad Perriman. Why? Why is he still on this team? And then you still have things like why do why how in the world does Mike Evans and Chris Godwin share like three or four targets in an entire half? Two, two. Yeah, like it just those things. But then you look up and Scotty Miller's getting it, and Dario Gumbale, and you know they're not ready yet for the for the stuff. Like you know it just it, it's that's the sort of stuff that's mind boggling. It's like what in the world? But it's hard to argue because they're still the fifth highest scoring offense in the league. And how do you win games, Ren? Score more than the other team. Points. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, all right. Anyway, uh, so who is having a worse year? Uh <clears throat> From a public standpoint, definitely Byron for sure. Yeah. But you know, from a from a hard standpoint, I, you know, Byron's got a fifth top scoring offense in the league. Todd Bowles has the worst. Like, so I I think it depends. From on what a results point. standpoint, it's 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 easily Todd Bowles. Sure. From public opinion standpoint. It's easily Byron Leftwich. I agree. Yeah, and I think that's probably the best answer on that. Yeah. So you, so Catherine, which one do you care about more? Are you, go. you know, a left brain person? <laughs> and you know, like these are the facts. Look at them. Then Bowles is definitely have it. Or are you a right brain person? Where like if there's so much smoke, there's got to be fire. You know. And then left switch would be the guy. Yep. All right. Question number two. Does B.A. have blind faith in Jameis or is he actually correct in his assessments of Jameis? I think B.A. has blind faith in Jameis to the media and to the fans. I have no idea what he thinks about Jameis privately. So what he talks about and making excuses for picks. Oh, did you hear on his show today that uh, he blamed the other three interceptions on Jameis? Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. I mean, he gave kind of excuses. He was like, he's like, the other three are on Jameis, uh, or the other two were on Jameis. No, three. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the second one? Yeah. What was the second one? There was an overthrow to Mike. That was a pick six. There was a one in the end zone that ended the game, basically. Right. There was the O.J. Howard one. Oh, the one at the front of the half, at the end of the half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, so he said, he said, but then he gave the excuses where he's trying to push the ball down the field to get us, you know, get us in field goal range. Mm-hmm. And then the other two, he said that, you know, he just got hurt the play before, which is true. Mm-hmm. And he went to plant and the ball sailed on him because it was his first throw after he was injured, which is true. And yeah. then the last one was Ryan Jensen snapped the ball for us again, twice right. in the game. Snapped the ball for he was ready. Mike didn't get off the line. You know, Jameis, you know, was hurrying up and threw it to the spot and it ended up he just didn't throw it far enough because right. didn't throw it high yeah, enough, far enough. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, you know, and yeah. it was, so it was just all. So to answer your question, um, I think publicly he's he's 100 percent pro Jameis and that's what he's doing. And that's the psychology in it. Jameis has to look over his shoulder every time he makes a mistake, you know, pats him on the head. So don't worry about it, man. You got the talent. Keep slinging. And I believe in you. Mm-hmm. But privately, he's assessing it. And he's going to give his report to Jason Light and the Glazers at the end of the year. Yeah, I think, I, I, and I think with that, along those lines, I agree with the idea that he has blind faith in Jameis in front of the media. Um, but I wouldn't say it's blind faith. I, I think it's his eyes are wide open. He knows what he has in Jameis. He knows where he is. And is he correct in his assessments of him? I would say his assessments aren't complete. Like, yeah. th- I, and and just by that, I mean his assessment is going to be over the whole year, and he's he's very much in the middle of it still. And you know, I think when you look at those like okay you talk about these interceptions specifically ba seems to know exactly what's happened on each interception yeah you know and and you know it's not that he's necessarily excusing every Jameis on every single one of them as much as just going listen it's your fault here's why it happened but it's still your fault like you know that that's what a lot of that so i think his assessments are probably correct you know, Jameis has a hell of a game. Jameis could have played better here. Jameis wanted to go out. You know, there, there's a lot there. So, I, yeah, I think his assessments are correct. I don't know that it's blind faith. I think his eyes are open, but I do think he still has faith in Jameis. Um, but he'll be... You know, when it when it comes time to talk about the contract, you know, Bruce will be fair in what he what he you know suggests, I guess, or what his report is. So, um, James come back next year. It doesn't matter. I don't think you're wrong. All right, uh, number three and last one from Catherine says, if the rumors were true, speaking uh, specifically to the rumors we heard uh, last year, two years ago, I guess now, are the Bucks as an organization going to regret not giving Gruden that ten year contract with complete control? The Raiders look bound for the playoffs in year two. Uh, um, 
I don't think so. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, first off, I don't think John wanted to come back here. I agree. You I don't know? think he ever wanted to come back here. Yeah. No, you know, I, I think he's a personality type where you know he heard through the grapevine or through his agent or backdoor channels that the you know that the the Glazers wanted to talk to him, mm-hmm. and I'm sure he sort of. I feel like he's the type of personality, and honestly, it's something I would do too. If I, you know, if I felt I was slighted as hard as he felt he was slighted by by the ownership group would be oh yeah yeah we'll sit down and talk yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and then sit there through the whole presentation and then uh you know and let him whine you and dine you and then you know like you know wipe your mouth with the napkin after you you just ate like the 200 hundred dollar steak and go hey uh go fuck yourself and then leave um (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know what i mean you would do that you're right you would do that i would i would totally do that and i would i would tell everybody i did it i'd live tweet it (laughs) um so so, um yeah that was never gonna happen but uh you know uh yeah he's you know it's his second year though so Mm -hmm. if if you want to compare apples to apples here which is the best way to do it uh let's see where the bucks are at this time next year yeah because remember last Last year, and that's the thing. Like they picked, I mean, they picked in front of us. Yeah, like, like I mean, think about being a Raiders fan last year with John Gruden coming back, knowing we just paid him so much money and gave him a ten-year contract with all the control he has. What and in the world did we just do? Khalil Mack. Yeah, l- yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> l- what in the world did we just do? What in the world? You know, it, it, it's an unfinished story. Like you know, uh, and that's. And by the way, Ren, this is one of the reasons why I am glad to be a fan podcast because we can go through the emotions like we can we can allow ourselves to be exactly where we are in our fandom in the moment um and we can still offer critical analysis we can still offer um those things but we can do it in the context of being a fan we don't have to pretend and i would say pretend for a lot of those guys to be unbiased you know what i mean like we don't we, we just don't have to pretend that way like we can just fully admit where we are and still talk about this and know that hey listen they come out and win next week and we'll be on cloud nine yeah. and we'll probably come out and say now hey listen don't forget how we were just feeling 24 hours ago this is not but over for this team yet you know yeah. um but, and but but we would forget <laughs> guess right. what it does to you brett Right, right, right. Um, but that's part of what this is, that we're tracking the being of being a fan. Uh, and hopefully we do it without just completely, completely being dumb about everything. All right, next email comes from Alex, our good friend Alex. He says, Dear Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not sure that he sent this to the right place. He says, <laughs> It's clear to me that this season has been a wash. This makes the eighth season in the last ten years that you have disappointed me. Really? Well, I thought they were ten for ten. I realized that this would be the case after the London game. After that game i'd hope for one thing and one thing only that we would defeat the saints at home i cannot emphasize this enough the saints and their fans are just the worst i, I like would, saints i like if i, I would agree about the between, team i would disagree about the fans yeah if i had to pick between like and i've said this a bunch of times yeah. like i really don't hate the saints organization uh-huh i hate their fan you know oh really i don't hate i don't hate the Panthers. well it's like when it's like oh my god i hate florida state like i don't hate the florida state institution uh-huh i hate hate freaking mark cook and jp peterson because they never shut the fuck up about them that's why i hate them i hate their fans okay i don't hate the seminoles i don't hate the school Mm -hmm. i don't know who the ad is i don't hate that guy but if i was going to rank fans in the Mm -hmm. nfc south safe to be at number one i like saint fans yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was gonna say I, you know, I had a lot of great interaction with Saints fans, both at the hotel that I stayed in this past weekend, you know, out and about around town, and, and then even at the game. Like Saints, Saints fans were actually they were pretty cool, to be honest with you. Like they really were. Yeah, they're um, happy. Yeah, you know, they're happy and yeah, and, they're friendly. And, they're not rubbing your face in it. Yeah. You know, they're um, you know, and they're just they're having a good time. It's, I I didn't have a problem with the fans. Um, you know, the team. I, I I've got my issues. With Sean Payton and those guys, but uh, but anyway, Chris Chris Kandinsky says I can't stand anything about that team, and that's fair. You can have your own opinion. I can't stand anything about that team, with the exception of the utmost respect that I have for Drew Brees. Fair enough. Other than that, they are the team that I hate the most. It seems like most people hate the Panthers, but for me, it's always been the Saints. Thank you, Buccaneers, for another year of losing and giving me the cherry on top of being smacked around by the Saints, not once but twice. 
I do not know, or I know we do not have a losing season yet officially, but come on. You think I'm going to believe we can whip out six victories in a row? Look, it's not even six victories in a row. We lose one more, and we officially have a losing season. Yeah, and to prevent that, you have to win six in a row. Fair enough, fair enough. No, I don't think we're going to whip out (laughs) six in a row. Yeah, I guess that's how that works. Yeah. yeah. He's like, we have to get the nine losses. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, no, no, no. We just have to make the nine losses. And he's like, no, no, no. We have to win six in a row. No, no, no. <laughs> Shut up. No, no, no. no it's you're late. Wrong. It's getting late. Oh, okay. Math, math, math. No, no. Three plus one equals four. No, 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 no. One plus three equals four. No, are you, no, are no, you no, done no. Yet? no. Are you done yet? No. Four plus zero equals four. I can go all night. I got a million of these. Yeah, yeah, Actually, yeah, it's do. infinite. Like yeah. I'll bring, I'll bring, I'll bring a negative. Matt, yeah, Matt, Matt, math is infinite. Matt, or er, Matt, oh, shit, what's your name? Ren. Matt is math is infinite. All right. Uh, next email comes to us from Paul. Paul says, "Hey guys, Kentucky Paul here. I wonder if Arians is coming back. His return has been a comedy of errors. We have the largest coaching staff and ex ref, and we still lose challenges and throw away timeouts. He has the Glazers spending a million dollars on a sports science department that a couple of nerds could tell people when to wear compression." The play calling and game management has been terrible. The defense is even worse than it was under Mike Smith. We should have traded OJ when we could have gotten something for him. But we have another huge must-win game. More talk of draft in November. More talk of how nothing is Jameis's fault. And more talk of how the refs cost us the game and so on and so on. Winners make plays. Losers make excuses. I expected us to be nine and se- uh, 7 and 9 this season with some improvement later on in the season. But now I think we'll be lucky to get to 5 and 11 again um you think we'll get back to five and eleven can we pull out two more wins here at the back part of the season Ren? first off i don't think i can argue with anything about that email yeah <laughs> i mean except, he's, except he's, i think i think i think arians will come back well yeah i was gonna say like the first sentence but yeah. i mean really like but it has know, been like, a comedy of errors we and I listened have, to yeah, like I ahead. listened to the sports science guys on Casey, and that was it. It's like, oh yeah, we got you know like blue tinted glasses to make you f- think you're asleep or right. make trick your time of day. And compression socks, mm-hmm. you know, and you know everyone got to fly across in a twin bed, basically, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, hey, go to bed early, guys. Get your body used to it. Right. And OJ Howard's out there snagging flag balls at you know eleven o'clock at night. Right. Because so, you know apparently all that helped us when we got over there and got our butts handed to us. I yeah. mean, jeez. I mean, so uh, I I said the floor for this team is eight and eight. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with it because I wow. don't have to change it yet. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll see. But for that to happen, I need the defense to come on and start playing like a, a defense, like a real defense. Yeah. I I got to be honest. I don't. I really don't know that we would win two more this season. It's possible. I think we might win two more this season. Maybe. Maybe. So. Um. All right. Next email. I'm not actually going to read this whole email. I, I, I'm just not. I, I love this guy. Brian from Memphis. He says. Oh lord. He says I'll keep this short. Okay. No. No. I won't. Um. And Brian goes off on you know everything uh, that you know. Brian goes if you know Brian from our instant cast shows. He calls in. Um. And uh, but but I will sum it up a little bit for him. He says I'm a. Uh, I'm officially off the entire coaching staff bus, and that includes Jason Light. All right. All right. Um, He says, I've been asking for us to move on from Jameis with extreme prejudice for years. Extreme prejudice in all caps. And that is very true. He says, my sentiments haven't changed. Um, But I I would like to point out to people who haven't heard Brian from Memphis call in to the the Instacast. That's where we met him. uh And talk about uh, how much he didn't like Jameis Winston, didn't believe in Jameis Winston, and didn't want him as the quarterback of the Buccaneers. He's not one of these people who won't listen to the counter argument. Right. He doesn't shout you down right you know he's calm about it he talks about it he'll listen to your side mm-hmm. but but I, I would think it's probably dear near impossible to waver from him but at least he'll have a conversation with you yeah as long as you can actually get a word in um, <laughs> because and, and it's and i know exactly what's going on brian doesn't have an, in Memphis doesn't have anybody else to talk about this so he no, has he all doesn't. these thoughts that are pent up and we are the outlet so when when he comes on the show all of these thoughts just come spewing out of him you know and 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 yes it can be hard to get a to get a word in but like i i get where it comes from you know and you're right when you do get to to actually talk to him he will talk to you and and you know it's it's one of the reasons why i like brian so um it's the anyway. only reason I like Brian. Well, there you go. Because uh, we don't know that much else about him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, 
I know you, Ren. I know you. <laughs> All right. Uh, he says, for starters, he, he's going to talk about the team now. For starters, B.A. came in the door the wrong way. Regardless of people how people felt about GMAC, I don't think he deserved the treatment that he got from Light or B.A. Uh, B.A. never really gave him a chance. Um, and yep, and then he continues on. Because they watched the film and didn't want him. Right. Um, now he says, next was the most absurd reason I've ever heard for explaining the backup situation. I've never s- seen a team let a viable backup walk and then sign an even worse b- backup so that the starting quarterback doesn't have to look over his shoulder so that he plays better. That's BS. Um, I think he's talking about, he doesn't specify, but I think it's letting Fitzpatrick walk, who was, you know, in his words, a viable backup. I would disagree. I think, I, and I've said this a few times, I feel, I think people put way too much stock in what Ryan Fitzpatrick did for this team. He had two and a half really good games, and and then he went back to being Ryan Fitzpatrick. I have, a, you, you know, know, yeah. I just sort of thought of this. I mean, uh, that like, was it. Your talk, yeah. No, no, and, and I agree with you. It's like, but I'm thinking, like, is there another more polarizing quarterback than Jameis Winston? It might be Ryan Fitzpatrick. As in, it's sort of like a straight down the middle 50-50 split of people that like him uh-huh. and think that, you know, he can win you games. And there's people on the other side that are just like, yeah, he can win you games, but then he's going to lose you a lot too. And that kind of sounds like Jameis, mm-hmm. you know? And is this like, like you just said, and then he went back to, to being Ryan Fitzpatrick. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just saw it in my head, like sort of fast forwarding 10, you know, years down the road and just somebody going, and then he went back to being Jameis Winston. Right. It's scary. Right. So, um, I, 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 and Brian, I, I really do apologize because he took the time to write out this, this full email. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just not going to read it because it's quite long. Um, but basically he goes on to, uh, he, it seems like he's turned his attention from Jameis mm-hmm. to BA. And here's how he finishes up. He says, the roller coaster has made everyone throw up and now nobody wants to come back on. BA is full of shit. And the way he coaches just doesn't work out with the players of this generation. You can't come and drag players under the bus and expect for them to play hard for you. You can't call out other players for the sake of the quarterback and his lack of confidence. That is a shitty message to the locker room and to the fans. Nothing has worked the way you said it would. I feel betrayed as a fan like a child that's been lied to by his parents at Christmas time. Do us all a favor and get the hell out. Go Bucks. Uh, it's, he's wrong and he's right. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I've talked to, I just, we just went over it in the show about the things that BA and his staff has promised us. Right. And I think more things that they've promised us have come true than not. Mm hmm. You know, um, so but I, I understand where he's coming from. I just I just don't I just don't think it's there. I don't I don't think the part about you can't throw players on the bus in this generation that are not going to play for you. If you talking about Vernon Hargraves, well, I mean, you don't have a leg to stand on that argument because Vernon Hargraves is terrible, mm-hmm. has always been terrible. You know, like the last that's sort of the last ditch effort. It's like, hey, son, you suck, you know, shape mm-hmm. up. And then he didn't, you know, yeah. and, and, he, yeah. and he just didn't like a, they've tried everything with Vernon. It's it's not it's it wasn't a a response thing if he's talking about Vernon. So I understand the frustration with BA because if you're in the camp where he thinks he might be mailing in, I thought about a question today, SBA. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, do you find it unfair? They don't allow you to have your golf cart on the sidelines, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, so you can just like tool up and down the sidelines as golf cart. So he doesn't have to stand. Um, And that's, you know, as the optimistic fan, I would love to think that that's not true. And I hope that it's not true. Mm-hmm. And I would bet money that that's not true about BA sort of mailing it in, you know, and delegating too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wouldn't feel like 100% confident in that bet, you know? Right. So uh, so I get what he's saying. Um, I just I just think, Brian, that you, you jump to conclusions. You, you, it all goes back to who do we blame now? Yeah, you know, yeah. it didn't work again. Yeah. Whose fault is it now? Right. And now all the point, all the fingers are going to BA and Jason Light this week. Sure. And and I, uh, you know, I, I, this sounds like to be more of a phone call, you know, like a conversation with Brian mm-hmm. than try to just sort of counterpoint, you know, that last part you just told me. Right. But you know, you know, he's not necessarily wrong, but you know, I'm just not there with you. And it's just kind of like what we talk about with Jameis. He talks about Jameis all all the negative stuff, which he's absolutely right Mm -hmm. then i talk about Jameis all the positive stuff and i'm absolutely right Mm -hmm. and he's not he's not where i am and i'm not where he is Mm -hmm. he might get to where i am 
one day, I might get to where he is one day. But right now, we're just not in the same spot. But I understand what you're saying. I hear you. I understand your fears. You know, and and I think they're valid. I just, I just, not, I'm not there yet. Yeah, and I'm I'm not there yet with the staff. Uh, he says, you know, the the um, uh, what what was it exactly? He said, um, he said, uh, he said, it just hasn't worked out. Um, uh, nothing. It says nothing worked out the way you said it would. Uh, and I I would just add the word yet. Nothing is said. Nothing has worked out the way you said it would yet. Um, but even that, like Ren, as you point out, there are some things that have worked out. It's not worked out on the win loss column yet. And I, okay, maybe maybe this is me. You guys are watching me right now. Come back to the normal, Brent. Like this, this is. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, like I'm reminded of the John Gruden example we just talked about with Catherine's email, right? Like, yeah. where where were Raiders fans at this point last year with yeah. John Gruden and everything that was going on there? And now he looks like he has the Raiders poised to do something. You know, they may or may not make or, the playoffs or even the Raiders know. fans in preseason. Yeah, because the record hadn't played yet. The record was still the same, right? You know, and they, everything's going on with with Antonio Brown at that point. Yeah, and oh my gosh, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. And then the and then the drafts where they took seal and feral third which is a huge shock to everyone like what who huh right what? right like huh like brian burns is on the board you know it's like uh-huh. you could have got that guy at 20 right <laughs> you know right. but he seems to be growing like they had a really good draft like they you know he seems to be fine they got jock jacobs in, in the second that running back alabama uh and then that max crosby guy i don't remember if you remember i used to call him the swede oh yeah the swede yeah yeah he and he's he's already i think he's got like six and a half sacks and they picked him up like in the fourth round there you go so Anyway, so things are tur- like exactly things are turning around, just like you're saying. It's like it's like none of the things that the staff had worked has worked. Well, if you take, you know, you're exactly right. Just like Seth Caster's email, mm-hmm. look at the Raiders now and look where they were. You right. know, not even like where they were this point last year, mm-hmm. but look where they were in the preseason, right after the draft and the AB stuff before they played a game. Like no one had hopped on the Raiders train. Mm-hmm. It was a dumpster fire, remember? Right, but I mean, and then look at the Rams, right? So Sean McVay goes out for the Rams, mm-hmm. you know, has a killer year, takes him to the Super Bowl his first year as a rookie head coach, right? No, second year as a rookie as as a head coach. I yeah. mean, it was real. It was real soon, right? He got into the playoffs. Got in the playoffs. Year. Okay, but this year, okay, they'll probably go back to the playoffs this year, right? Mm-hmm. The Rams. Maybe no, we're not sure. It's they're not in the looking, hunt. They're in the hunt. Okay, that's what I mean. Do, does like anybody have any? In the hunt. Does anybody really think the Rams are going to make it all the way back to the Super Bowl this year? No, probably not. Right. So that I mean, that's my point. Like because you have these flash in the pans, we want that flash in the pan too. But what would you rather have? Sustained success or the pop up for one year? I'd rather have sustained success. And if that means putting up with this year, which by the way, let's remind ourselves about this year. Bucks couldn't do shit in free agency this year. No. They just couldn't. It wasn't there. They'll have a lot more room to do stuff this coming year, even with the extra contracts and stuff that they have coming up to sign. So, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see what I'm happens. I'm still amazed about all the moves they made and got with this. Like, cause we only had like $10 million. Yeah. They they were able to do some stuff. They certainly were. So, all right, we got just a couple more emails. So let's get through these. And uh, We still uh, have a couple more? Just two. Just two. Um, uh, I, I could have sworn Brian was going to be last. <laughs> uh, this one comes from Steven. says, hey, guys, I couldn't listen to the Instant Cast live live because i get up really early on mondays i know ren it's a poor excuse says as i it lay my disappointed excuse. head on my pillow <laughs> that's what i was gonna think like, <laughs> what kind of crap is that yep yep actually i kind of i like what steven says here he says as i lay my disappointed head on my pillow i knew just like on christmas day brent and ren claws would leave an amazing gift in my podcast stuffing stocking i woke up from my slumber extra early on monday anticipating a new podcast and some bitching wow you two and the listeners did not disappoint what an amazing show I had some points written down on Sunday to send you guys, but you covered them all and so much more. In fact, since listening to the show, I feel so much better. So thanks for that. I really have nothing left to say about the team that hasn't been covered repeatedly. That's how I felt on our last episode, to be honest with you. That's me. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, that was my addendum. Uh, Steven goes on. He says, let me just say you guys are amazing. And that was probably one of the best shows. Thank you for going long and taking the extra phone calls. If there's one positive takeaway for all the fans that did go to the game, I think my friends that have Buffalo season and tickets in the years that they sat watching the miserable team is in no way different than watching Tampa, except for Tampa fans get to go to the beach after the game. <laughs> uh, well, they sit in bitter, bitter, miserable cold with icicles growing off their ball. He didn't say All that. Right. I added that in. Says again, keep up the great work. Thank you, Stephen from Canada. 
You're welcome, Stephen. Nice email. I like that. I like well, it. Said. well thought out, a little playful. Nice. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Well Com- said. Compliment us. Right. Well said. Well said. All right. All right. Final and, email. You know, and honestly, oh, I think you know, I'd rather I'd rather watch. I'd rather be in a cold weather outdoor stadium than be in Ray J in August. Mm. I would. Okay. Fair enough. Teach their own. I'll 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 take Ray J in August than anywhere without else you, in cold. Without weather. you sit. Without you sit in the shade though. Uh, I'll t- I'll take Ray J in the ball hot sun on the third floor. The th- than than rather go to one of those other ones in the cold. That's just Re- me. really. Yeah, that's me though. I hate the cold. I hate 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 the cold. But you have hate so it. much natural insulation. I know. You th- it's it's a cooling system actually. I hate oh, the I hate the cold. <laughs> wow! All these years, I never no, no because <laughs> yeah, I may have a cooling insulation or, or a, a, a natural insulation, but I still have exposed skin that gets cold. It's yeah, you put clothes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't like cold. I don't like cold. All right, yeah, final so- email. <laughs> I Who doesn't wear a coat? Never mind. I, I, I have exposed skin. Like what? Your nose? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Final email. Brad uh, comes to us from Brad. Uh, Brad's one of our uh, patrons, actually. Uh, he says, good day, gents. Okay, Brent, you have my permission to do your terrible attempted Aussie accent, but try to make it less Dickensian and more down under. Try keeping your mouth closed as possible so the flies don't get in. <laughs> uh, I won't do this in this one. He says, listening to the instant cast, it got me thinking that this whole idea of what we do as fans, give up and how the two of you might have reached that point. This might have changed by the time you're reading, but I'm not sure why it would. I can't imagine how making the drive for hours and hours to go watch that steaming turd of a performance. And if you're watching it from home, it ruins whatever is left of your weekend. For those of us in slightly less favorable time zones, following this team ruins your whole week. I'm sure parts of Europe and Asia have it even worse than we do, but there's no worse way to start your week than waking up early at 5 a.m. on Monday, or even earlier, before daylight savings a couple weeks ago. Game Pass International is now a giant steaming turd, so you can't watch on a big screen without using a PC, uh, which then has no skip feature. That's a whole different rant for another day. Why did I bother go to bed early to get up at half past midnight to watch the Carolina game in London? Why do I destroy my week's sleep cycle uh, just, to, just to let my week be destroyed? Why did I convince myself that this season would be different? There's probably a reason why why I've only ever met one other Bucks fan in real life. This week, I saved myself the pain. I didn't set an alarm for stupid o'clock to torture myself. Instead, I woke up at the same hour, went to work, lived on spoiler alert, and watched the first quarter during my lunch hour, and that was enough. I, <laughs> I think I'll be doing this for the rest of the season and then deciding whether to stay on spoiler alert until I get home or give in and look up the scores in hope of not getting the shock of my life. It's unlikely. I guess that means that I've already given up this week. It really is a Bucks life. Brad from Melbourne. You know why the world's not going to end today, Brent? Why is that? Because it's already tomorrow in Australia. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Although I don't, I don't think it's it's just past midnight for us right now, like in this moment. And I think in Australia it's actually just like noon, so not quite yet. Is it, is it just past midnight? I think it's it's only about a twelve hour time difference over there. Twelve. Is it just is it just past midnight for us right now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you said because you think. I have. Do I have a clock? Oh, I do have a clock. Oh, uh-huh. it's half hour past midnight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, forty minutes ago. You know why the world's not going to end today? <laughs> <laughs> Besides, it'll be tomorrow in two minutes. <laughs> because it's always uh, tomorrow in Australia or already. Right. Can I try my Australian accent? Sure. Go ahead. Pip pip cheerio. Uh, God save the queen. Tea and crumpets. I don't think that's Australian. I think that's, Manchester, uh, Manchester United. God save the queen. Well, Brad, uh, please email Buck, in and Buck, uh, give Buck, us a Buckingham ruling. Buckingham Palace. Wow. Double decker red buses. Herods. Yeah. Stone face gods and funny hats. I'm not even going to stop you. Keep going. Downton brother. Abbey. I'm not. I'm not even editing this out. <laughs> oh, y'all. I'm sorry. You just gonna have to listen to it till he's done. I can't stop him. Can't stop him. Funny cookies. Grocery stores that look like museums. <laughs> That's the weirdest part about Europe when you go to Europe. It's like when you first get there, the first time you ever go to Europe and you get there, you know, Uh and you get off your public transportation, probably a tube, whatever, and you walk up outside and you go, and you look around and everything looks like it was built like at the, you know, sort of, and this isn't true because it's not that old, but it looks like it was built sort of at at, at the, the crest of the Roman Empire. And you're right. like, God, that building is so awesome, beautiful. And then somebody walks out with a bag of groceries. And then you kind of right. turn in a circle and you go, oh. You're like, it just take like, everything. Oh, so every building in this whole entire town's a thousand years old. Never mind. 
I get it. Mm-hmm. So that's what happens when you ride on the old tubes there in Australia. I'm not sure how you got from England or from, from Europe to Australia, but okay. Huh? Did you take a little trip on yeah. the to the Botany Bay or something? Take the Botany Bay. Botany Bay. This is City Alpha 6. There you go. There you go. Uh, hey, listen, Brad, thank you for your email. I feel you, buddy. I really do. I feel you. Um, gosh, that, I... I lived overseas for quite a while, uh, for three years. And, in Chinatown? Uh, in New York? South Korea, actually, South Korea. And I remember having, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, having to get up to watch the game. And I and I wouldn't. I just, I think for those three years, it was, I just checked the scores. is all Because I wasn't waking up. Like, Brad, you're a better person than I am. And we didn't have Game Pass International back then, so it was really hard to get the games anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's anything. Ren, this is the fandom this week, buddy. This That's is much the it. inbox. Yeah. This is the inbox. Yeah, for this week anyway. For this week. Hey, listen, if you guys would like to send an email, get that read on the next uh, next edition of the inbox, which will be coming out next week, you guys could do that. Send those emails to theputercast at gmail.com. Let us know where you are in your fandom. Uh, of course, most of you guys will probably send it after this upcoming game against the Falcons, uh, and we'll be talking more about the Falcons game. Um, but, Ren, that's going to do it. We're going to close the inbox. We're going to get out of here uh, for tonight uh, before we get, you know, get back on the train and hit Buck in the News. So um, we got Bucket the News coming up. We got Instant Cast on Sunday. You guys, make sure you join us for that. Uh, we'll figure out. Ren, Ren may be uh, looking a little peckish, a little greener than normal. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Ren, tell the folks Yo. where they can follow your adventures this week. Uh, you can follow my adventures. Uh, bangers and Mash. Scotch eggs. Shrimp Tetley's. on the Bobby. No. About that no. One? That's that's England. What? Tetley's. Beef eaters. London Tower. Tower Bridge. You didn't notice I was doing an English accent and saying all English things when I said I wanted to try my Australian accent? Yeah, I did. I absolutely okay. did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you said shrimp on the Barbie, which is obviously English. So yeah, obviously. you messed it up. <laughs> obviously, obviously shrimp obviously. on the Barbie is English. Yeah. Along with dingoes and sheep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and donk. opera house. I got a donk. What's a donk? Okay. I'm a donk. Go ahead, Red. Where can they follow your adventures this week on the internet? Is that one or two? Uh, I think it was two. Yeah. I think it was two. Yeah. It probably was two because two wasn't funny. Nah, that's neither, not a knife. Neither was that. This is a knife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that. That yeah. was a cool English dude. Right. My name's, my name's Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Majesty Secret Service from Australia. <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now, folks. I really don't. But what am I supposed to be doing? You're telling them where your freaking email or, or Twitter address is. Oh, uh, it's on Twitter. My <laughs> Twitter address. You find it on Twitter. Duh. <laughs> Uh, at Rendax, R-E-N underscore D-A-X-T. Uh, I'm always down to talk Buccaneers football. What Brent was alluding to was I'm actually leaving for Ireland. Actually, when you hear this, when this is released, I'll be in Ireland because mm-hmm. recording this on Tuesday and I'm leaving the next day. This is going to come out till you know, Thursday. Well, I guess with Brent, usually Friday morning, we'll do mm-hmm. another double release. But... Uh, <laughs> But my plan is to, and I did this. I did this whole pod, uh, actually the past two pods on the iPad. So I'll be taking that with me to Ireland. So I shouldn't miss any shows. Yeah, and I have it all set up where I can watch the game. So about me being a little green, uh, you know, um, on the Instacast, I should be. I should be coming at you guys live from Ireland. A little more I emerald. Even, I don't even know where the. Uh, I don't even know the time change. So I don't. I don't know when. I, like, I don't say, know if I'm going to have to get up early in the morning or no, I think like, you're just going to be super be like late. Nine yeah. in the morning. No, no, I think it's going to be like three, four o'clock in the morning your time. Um, because they're about like five hours ahead of us. I don't know. I'll yeah. find out. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Ren. Uh, really? We, sure. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. I get up. I get up in the middle of the hotel room. Yeah. Do an hour show, yelling and screaming. There you go. Do it. I awesome. can't believe those guys. <laughs> yeah, well, at least we'll get a few hours of sleep between between the game and uh, the instant cast. So, uh, with that, uh, you can find me at Brent Allen Live across all the social medias. The show is at the Peter Cast on Twitter, Facebook, at the Peter Cast at gmail.com. If you want to send in emails, iTunes reviews, always welcome. Say hello to all of our patrons out there. It's been a while. I think I, I, I haven't forgotten about you guys. I really haven't. You guys are awesome. You help the show keep going. We're about to upgrade some new technology, too, around here, and it's very much thanks in part to what you guys are doing over there at Patreon. Uh, Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, find out how you can support the show got some new tiers going up so you guys want to make sure you check that out as well if you it's been a while since you've been over there
there. Uh, we're going to switch that around. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash computer cast. Ren, uh, that's going to do it for this week uh, with the inbox that is now closed. Buck in the news. Instacast coming up next. So until then, guys, go. Go.